Today we're looking at being able to solve complex unit conversion problems using dimensional analysis. Um, this may be problems that have multiple unit conversions that need to be done. This may be problems that have um, square units that need to be converted. There's going to be lots of different things that were going on. These are going to be more complex problems. So really careful attention to the units is going to be what makes you successful or what makes you not successful. Okay. So looking at this uh, first problem, it says 125 square inches is how many square centimeters? So let's go ahead and write our answer sentence. Our answer sentence should be, it is length and it's how many square centimeters, so centimeters squared. So the interesting thing with square units is that we can treat them just like we would any other exponent. So centimeters squared is really the same thing as centimeters times centimeters. And when we're talking about canceling out units, that's really important. We can't cancel out centimeters with centimeters squared. We can cancel out centimeters with centimeters. So we want to break this apart when we're getting ready to do our unit analysis here. All right. So looking at the information we're given, we're given a situation of 125 square inches, or inches squared. And we're given a rate here of one inch over 2.5 centimeters. Or we could write it the other way around, 2.5 centimeters, centimeters over one inch. All right, so we want to continue to set this up. Um, looking back here, we need our answer to be centimeters squared. And again, have in our brain that we know that's the same thing as centimeters times centimeters, okay? So we're going to have that in our brain. If I'm looking over here, and I want to match this, it looks like I want centimeters on top. 2.5 centimeters over one inch. So that's putting our rate in. That looks like that's matching up. I have centimeters, but I have centimeters squared over here. Is centimeters, Kip yes or Kip no, is centimeters the thing, same thing as centimeters squared? No, it's the same thing as centimeters times centimeters. So what do you think that we need to do in order to make sure that we have centimeters times centimeters? What can we do? Triana? Multiply by itself. So we're going to put that rate back in there one more time. And now we're going to see that we have the correct units here. We have centimeters times centimeters. That's going to give us the centimeters squared. That's what we want. Now, the weird thing that happens here is this ends up with us having these inches. We have two sets of inches, inches times inches. Inches times inches is going to be inches squared. So good news is we look at our situation, and sure enough, we have 125 inches squared, which really we can think about as really just being inches times inches. So when we're getting ready to cancel out our units, I have one inches, cancels out with one inches, and one inches cancels out with inches squared. Now, if we're not paying super careful attention to those units and those square units and knowing what those square units really are, we're gonna miss this one. I see a ton of students and a problem like this where this whole part in the middle just isn't there. And so they ended up having inches squared, canceling out with inches, and centimeters being the same thing as centimeters squared. We know those are not the same thing. So we have to be super careful when we're dealing with those square units. All right. So what this tells us to do is 125 times 2.5 times 2.5. So I'm going to start with 125 times 2.5 is 5. Carry the 2. 2 carry the 1, 6, 0, 0 carry the 1, 2 times 2 is 4, carry the 1 is 5, 2 times 1 is 2, and I add up to 5, 1 carry the 1, 
and one decimal place. So I get 312.5. But I need to multiply by the 2.5 again. We have two multiplications of 2.5 there. This just gets a little bit messy. To carry the one, five times is six, and five times three is 15. Zero. Zero carry the one. Two times two is four, plus the one is five. Two times one is two, and two times three is six. Five, two, one, carry the one. Eight, seven, and I've got two decimal places now, so one, two times. I should get 781.25. Centimeters and looks like I've got one times one on the bottom. So really there's nothing going on there on the bottom. We get 781.25 centimeters squared. Okay. So that's today's first example of a more complex unit conversion problem. It has to do with those square units and being really careful that we understand square units are really unit times unit. Yes, Alvin. So we recognize that centimeters times centimeters, that's the only thing that's going to give us the centimeter squared. Joshua. So, and the centimeter squared at the end here, mm -hmm. the 2.5 and the 2.5, that's basically like the same, that's basically like what's doing for here. So we have the 125 times 2.5 times 2.5. So we've got three things to multiply across the top. Mm -hmm. All right, next one says, a plane is traveling 45 meters per second. How fast is the plane traveling in feet per second? All right, so this one's a little bit different. When I look over here, I love my question. My question is, how fast is the plane traveling in feet per second? The plane is traveling. Blank. And here we have to be very careful. The units are actually a rate. How fast is the plane traveling in feet per second? Okay, so our units are gonna be feet over seconds. So when we get ready to set this one up, we're gonna end up needing to have units on top and on bottom. The situation that's given to us is also a rate. So we're starting with the situation given to us is the plane is traveling a speed, which is 45 meters over one second. And the information that's given to us, the rate here, is 1 meter over 3.3 feet, or 3.3 feet over 1 meter. All right, so we're starting over here with our answer units, and because our answer units are feet per second, that means we have feet on top and seconds on bottom. Paying really careful attention to those units. Now, we want a rate that's definitely going to get us the feet on top. Okay, so which one of these rates do I want to use? Of course, I want to use this second one. 3.3 feet over one meter. Now we can see that that doesn't give us meters on the meters and seconds on the bottom. That's not going to be right. Okay, so we have feet over here and feet over here. That's good, but we have meters on bottom and seconds on bottom. Now what we want to do is we can only have one other piece of information that we can plug in here that could be useful, and that's this situation over here. This 45 meters per second. So I'm going to plug that in and see what happens. 45 meters for one second. Now what I see happens here with my units, and this is where it kind of gets, it's like, it's almost like a puzzle in problems like this. 
So here I see my meters cancels out with my meters. And that's definitely good. And what's left over here on the bottom? What units? Seconds. Good news. We wanted seconds on the bottom. What units are left on top? Feet. Good news. We wanted feet left on top. So that tells us that all of our units are set up correctly. So even if you're struggling with this problem and you don't really understand feet per second, meters per second, blah, 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 that's all it is. It's blah, 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 blah. Because all you have to do is make sure that your units end up correct. So here we have 45 times 3.3 .3 on top, and we have a 1 times 1 seconds left on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that 45 times 3.3 .3 while I answer Marquita's question. Okay. One decimal place, and it looks like I get 148.5. It's only one decimal here. So 148.5 feet per second. So that's our answer. All right. So that one's a little bit more complex. We get some different type of information in the problem. It's a little bit weird for us to have a situation and an answer that is a rate itself. Okay. All right, if I'm running at a rate of 2.5, actually, let's skip down to this one. I think this one's going to be the smarter one to do first. All right, what is 225 feet in centimeters? So it is blank centimeters. And here we see that we're given two unit conversions feet and centimeters squared. So this is going to be weird. We definitely have a situation where we have 225 feet. But we're given two different rates here. So we're actually going to write two given rates. In this case, given rates. We have one foot for every 12 inches. Or we have 12 inches for every one foot. We're also told that one inch is 2.5 centimeters, or 2.5 centimeters is one inch. So we have these two rates. We're going to write them down both ways. Maybe we'll need them both. Maybe we'll only need one. We'll see. So as always, with these problems, we're going to start with the answer of our units. Centimeters. I definitely have a rate that can help me get my centimeters on top, so I'm going to go ahead and use that, 2.5 centimeters. Over one inch. And then as I get ready to plug in my situation, I have 225 feet. Do my units cancel out? No, so this isn't going to work out for me. I have feet and I have inches, and so things are in the wrong place here. So I'm going to erase this. I'm going to say, all right, I have something here, and I need to get all the way over to 225 feet. So I need something on bottom to cancel out my feet. Do I have a rate written somewhere on this page that has feet on the bottom? Alvin. Perfect. 12 inches over one foot. So that gets our feet to cancel out. And very fortunately for us, it also gets our inches to cancel out, leaving us with only one unit left, centimeters. And our answer is supposed to be in centimeters. So we need to do 225 times 12 times 2.5. So there's a lot of information going on there. And this would be really confusing if you tried to do this without the unit analysis. It's still kind of confusing even with the unit analysis. We did that there. But it's the units that really lead our way. So we have to multiply 225 times 12 
0 carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. 2 times 2 is 4. 0. And 5, 2, 2. Add it all up. It gives me 2,700, and I need to multiply that by 2.5. Five carry the three. Say what? Mm, no, I got four plus two plus the one I carried. Is anybody else getting twenty nine hundred? Just you. Uh, now I'm finishing, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, 4 carry the 1 and 2 times 2 is 5, so I get... five, seven, six, and 1 decimal place, so I get 6,750. Alright, Psalm. I know, there are a lot of different things that you have to pay attention to, but really, there's only one thing you have to pay attention to, and that's the units. Okay? So looking at this last problem, it says if I'm running at a rate of 2.5 meters per second. So this definitely looks like a rate. We're going to have to see later on what that is. How fast am I running in miles per hour? So this is one of those where this information up here, this situation is actually a rate. So if we're looking for a rate for our answer, our situation is also going to be an answer. So I am running blank miles per hour. Okay, so if we have a answer that's supposed to be a rate, our situation is also going to be a rate. So in this case, this 2.5 meters per second, while it looks like a rate, it's also our situation. Wow. 2.5 meters per one second. It's very much like the second problem that we did. All right, so we have these two conversion rates here, so I'm actually gonna write them both down as given rates. We may need them both, we may only need one. So one hour is 3,600 minutes, or 3,600 minutes is one hour. And up here I have one mile is 1,610 meters or 1,610 meters is one mile. All right, so starting as always with the units of our answer. It's supposed to be miles and hours. I need to find a way to get miles on top. That's super easy. Looking over here at this rate, I want that. One mile over 1,610 meters. Now I'm also looking over here, I also noticed that I need hours on bottom in my answer. So the way I'm going to get hours on bottom is by looking over here at this rate. 3,600 minutes over one hour. Now, as I'm looking at my units so far, do I have any units that cancel out? Keep yes or keep no. As I'm looking at my units so far, do I have any units that cancel out? What units cancel out? 
All right, so far I've got nothing that cancels out. So I've got a whole bunch of extra stuff that I have got to find a way to get rid of. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my situation here. I'm gonna see what that does for me. 2.5 meters over one second. Okay, so now our meters cancels out with our meters. That's definitely good. But my seconds and my minutes don't cancel out. Okay, so now that we've fixed that, this should be seconds. This should be seconds. So that makes our seconds and our seconds cancel out. Okay, and I have miles left over on top, hours left over on bottom. That's exactly what we want. So we have 2.5 times 3,600 on top. I can tell you that is 9,000 over 1610. And I'm gonna save us from doing that work right now. And I'm just going to tell you that this is approximately 5.6. Okay, so this is a very complex problem. This is one that you will do in high school physics, but it's one that you can do now. You can do the math now. So, the point is that you start with the units of your answer, miles per hour, and you write down the given information, you fit the puzzle pieces together until you have the units that you want left over and everything else cancels out. Okay? Questions? It's all. I was just about physics. Would you need enough physics to be like a doctor? Yes. All right, key points. Alvin. Always keep the right unit rates. Thank you. Because you got the key. Other key points. Adolfo. Not always be used. Okay, sometimes. If the answer is a rate, comma the situation may be a rate. Other key points. Marquita. Yep. Yep. If extra units <laughs> do not cancel. And I think this is probably the most important key point. So if the extra units do not cancel, you need to add info, such as situations or rates. Add info, situations or rates, until units cancel correctly.
Okay.